Hey guys, Dean Mike here. Hope you're ready for another episode of Link's Awakening. I am absolutely positively maybe ready. So let's get started. We're back at Mobby Village because there is a specific item that I've been teasing that is integral for completing easily, efficiently, the fifth dungeon. So we're going to go ahead and grab that item right now. So we do have the proper funding after a time spent bumping and grinding at the trendy game. We can grab the bow and arrow set now. It's ours. We can now contribute dutifully to the local economy, but what if we don't want to do that? What if we just want to have it? Growing up, I was always told that the best things in life were free. So what if we just give ourselves a bit of a discount? A five finger discount. Well, would you look at that? So now, you got the bone arrow, you got your 980 rupees to spend on whatever you want. That feels pretty good, right? Or does it? Hmm. Well, in the original game, going and taking an item from the town shop without paying for it would have the parishioners of the town label you as a thief in all caps, and you could never get rid of that name for the rest of the game. Doesn't seem to be the case here, but... It's not really a good feeling. You know, stealing isn't right. Maybe, maybe we'll take it back. I'm sure he'll forgive, for, uh, he'll forgive us, right? Well, so yeah, it's fine. We'll pay for it. We got the money. Oh. Okay. So this shopkeep does not take too kindly to people stealing from him. And he aggressively murdered us. This is a child's game, by the way, so that is a very hard lesson to learn. So that first run through was not canon. This one's going to be. We're going to buy the bow officially. We saved up all them dollary dues to do it. All right, excellent. So we got some mad work to do in this episode. Very, very busy. If you thought the other ones were busy, uh, crazy, because this one's gonna be even busier. There's a lot of... side questy type stuff that you can take care of in this area. Martha's Bay is pretty... It's brimming with life and all kinds of things that you're gonna do, but this dungeon that we're about to... Excuse you. We're about to join in and counter. is pretty long and it's not linear. So this is one of those situations where you're gonna want to make some haste if you're playing through this game, I guess. It doesn't really matter if you're just playing through casually. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I prefer not to have my episodes be 45 minutes long if I can avoid it. So let's enter dungeon five. We'll go ahead and take care of that side quest stuff later. NBD. So this is level five, the catfish is maw. This level was actually named for Christine the Goat, who gave Mr. Wright that picture of Peach instead of herself. She's a catfish, yeah. So, pretty neat. Now that we've got the bow, the bow is pretty OP. Big fan of it. It's one of those items that is a staple in most every Zelda game that it's available. I mean, who doesn't love going shooting bows? Archery is fun, right? Like everybody likes archery, I think. Unless you've been shot with a bow and then maybe you wouldn't feel the same way. So yeah, maybe like, I don't know, uh, deer. Maybe deer might not like archery as much. They would probably have conflicting feelings about it. So I totally get that. I remember that being one of the things you could do in like, in like rec class, back in school, in like elementary school, have like a field day and you go out and you just shoot some bows and arrows, which is, you know, if you think about it, completely safe. Okay, so this room is very important to think about later. Moving on. 
game is a very specific and slightly frustrating gimmick to it. And it is a it is a dungeon. Like I said, this is the first one that's not linear. So you can't really just kind of brute force it. This is the dungeon that as a child gave me fits just because of what you have to do to progress. It's not the same as, you know, go in a room, take down an enemy, collect your reward. It, it's it's not it's not as simple as that. So it can get very frustrating. Also, I believe these enemies are called Helmosaurs, maybe? There's a large version of the Helmosaur in... I want to say... Uh, Link to the Past, maybe? Like, it's one of the bosses. Like, it's got a, a, a shield on its face, and you have to... No, 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 no. Turn around. <laughs> That's pretty funny. He trapped himself in a loop. So these guys are pretty brutal to try to take down initially because their their masks make them invulnerable. In Link's Awakening, I think if you had the if you had the hammer, you could hammer away at the mask and it would. Uh, It would make him vulnerable, and then you would attack. I believe that's how that works, right? Okay, so we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Next, to grab those arrows. We're getting a little low. I believe up to this point, you can have a maximum of... Maybe 30 arrows? There's a way to get more. And I recommend you do that, but that's something that in my haste to progress to show you fine folks of the internet the complete ins and outs of this dungeon I did not grab, but I'll grab it on the way out. So this is the hint to the mini boss. It says, if you can't destroy a skeleton with your sword, try using a bomb. What does that mean? Well, we're about to find out. Enter Master Stalfos. It would be cool if they would at least give this guy a a little bit of fanfare, because he's kind of cool. So this is your mini boss. He will crumple when you hit him with your sword. You have to hit him from the blind side or from or from the back, and then drop a bomb on his shattered corpse. Is it a corpse if it's a skeleton? I don't know. I don't make the rules. But this can be kind of tricky your first time around. You don't have to actually hit him from the from the back. You can hit him anywhere that his hitbox is available. So letting aggroing onto him is hard. Come on, bud. There we go. Now, thankfully, you only have to fight him uh, once. Right? Oh. Okay, well, that's weird, right? Why would he? Huh. Okay, well, that was a little frustrating, but it seems like whatever he was going to give us is here. Oh. Okay, so I guess this is what we get. We stole from the shop and he stole from us, so that's that's pretty rude, but... Not really much you can do about that. But in general, this this dungeon is... I don't know, I like it, it's fun. It's probably my favorite one just by virtue of being different. It's a little frustrating just because it's not linear and if you don't know how the gimmick works, then you're just gonna spend a lot of time wandering around, which can get old. So I can understand the frustration. Especially if you've been playing for a while and you just want to make some progress and you can't because you're having to deal with the game not really being straightforward with what you're supposed to do. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that piece of power. 
We'll come back to this. It's actually not the way that we need to go. That's the one downside to this area, is that it's not super clear what the order of operations is for progress. There's a lot of enemies in this dungeon. There's a lot of potential ways that you can make mistakes. Oh, that was cool. That was not intentional. It's funny that there's cheap cheeps in this dungeon because we went to the trendy game to rack up some cash and we got ourselves our own cheap cheeps, so. Instead, we'll go this way. There's a bit of a, I don't know if I'd call this a spinner, but it does remind me of those spinner rooms in the Oracle games. They love to put those in dungeons for whatever reason. Like, they really love to put those in dungeons. And it just got really, really old after a while. I think there's there's even one dungeon where there's like three or four of them in a row near the end. Like, it's supposed to be some sort of a, a challenge, I guess, but in my opinion, it, it doesn't feel challenging to me. It just feels... Like a weird padded gimmick? I don't know. Sorry for those of you who may be spinner lovers. Not trying to rain on your spinner parade. Okay. So we actually went the way that we will eventually. Excuse you. So we're gonna dodge master stuff. Oh, come on. Get out of here. We gotta be careful here. Nope, nope. We're getting very bad luck with his hitbox here. If you hit him from the weak side, usually when he opens up his arm to swing, that's a good opportunity to blow him up. He'll open himself up. And then you can sneak in there all alongside under his arm and attack. So that's a pretty easy way to do it. Now, mind you, I say easy like I'm doing this really well. The reality is that I, I, I say it easy as a way to like keep you all optimistic. More like I don't do what I'm doing kind of thing. So hopefully that helps you all to Stay positive and realize that you're probably more equipped to beat this child's game than I am. Oh, that's not what you're supposed to do at all. Hopefully this room will give us a little bit of a resource refresher. Nope, just kidding, because that would be nice and screw me. Anyway, so progress has been made. We've beaten Master Stalfos twice, which is cool. You actually can't progress in this room until you kill all of the gels, so make sure you do that. We prefer hairspray in this economy. And make your way to the third Master Stalfos fight. It's kind of weird that they lump these all in right in a row, but it is what it is. Hopefully we don't take too much damage because I'm trying not to this time. The reality of my situation is that I am taking a lot of damage and I'm trying not to do that, but hey. Sometimes you try so hard and you get so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. That's just what's tough is if you can jump out of the way of his swing, using the rock's feather, that should give you a bit of a boost. Hopefully enough space to... Nope, that is not good. So you can hack and slash. That's three down. So if we remember, there was a fourth room. So we are going to have to do this one more time. This nets us the map. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the catfish's maw. So take a look at that catfish. Definitely looks like a catfish. For those of you who know what catfishes are, that is a picture-perfect replica 
of said creature. Excuse you. So those enemies, I don't remember what they're called. The buzz blur, 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 whatever's. They are really frustrating to deal with. And the item that is needed to dispatch said things is something that you get as an end game item. So you don't even really get to do anything with it until the very end. You can get it sooner if you want to. But we'll see how I feel. Maybe I'll wind up picking it up sooner rather than later, but I haven't made up my mind yet, so it is pretty useful. I mean, the main reason why I don't why I don't get it sooner than later is just because it's kind of a game breaker. So I will decide in time what I want to do. It is super useful though. I mean, upon collection of said item, you can turn those bad boys, the buzzy things, you can turn those into fairies. So maybe, the, I think maybe those are the anti-fairies. Maybe that's what they do. That would make sense, right? Yeah. Common sense. Which is not always so common. Okay. So, we're making some pretty good progress here. We're about maybe... I want to say... I'm not sure how to qualify how, how far away we are to the end of this dungeon, but I mean, we're getting there. Oh, not this way. That's just the one thing that's really frustrating about this dungeon is getting around and trying to remember where you've been and what you're supposed to do. Not always the easiest. And that's why this is super frustrating. I mean, this is a game made for kids, and it used to really upset me as a child, just because this level in particular is just not, it's just not clear what you're supposed to do. So as a kid trying to do that, you're just thinking like, what am I doing wrong? Like this, like going, <laughs> going to the same area that I just was, yeah. These these episodes are not rehearsed, everybody, so if we're expecting MLG Pro gameplay, not today. This is just when the game starts to get a little tougher and nope, that's, <laughs> you gotta re-equip our rocks feather. Actually warping the entrance is actually pretty good, never mind. Where we need to go is closer to the entrance than there. So let's go ahead and put our Rock's Feather back on. That was a misclick, but a good one. You ever have that happen? Where you're making a mistake and you think all is for naught and then turns out it was a blessing in disguise all along. This is the correct way. This staircase is where you would make progress. I don't know what kind of episodes people like to watch when they watch Let's Plays. Like, do you want to watch the person just coast through what they're doing? Or do you like a little bit of tension that comes from the person being a inept fool as they play? All right, guys, here it is, 4 of 4. The final Master Stalfos battle. He can jump now, he picked up a new move. But that also makes him pretty susceptible to being attacked. So just be mindful of that. I'm actually doing a little better in this final battle than I've done in the other three, which is questionable and embarrassing to say the least. Yep, that was the easiest of the four. That's ridiculous. That's just how life works sometimes. But he explodes. And it's weird how the game just kind of like, eh. It's kind of like, you know, he dies or re-dies. You get the hook shot and then that's it. Which is very strange how the game handles that situation. 
So this is another time when having Monbo's Mambo is really good. I don't think it's required at any point in the game, but not being able to warp is really frustrating and you are really putting yourself at a disadvantage in that situation. So now that we have the hookshot, we can steal the baby Helmosaur's mask, make him vulnerable and come over here. And now we can grab things at a distance. Pick ourselves up an optional 100 rupees. We like that. Progression now in the game is a lot easier. There's some things in the overworld, if you remember, that were dependent on being able to grab things from far away that we could not do. So now that we can, our lives are a heck of a lot easier. You can grab onto pretty much any block that's at a distance. So that makes things very nice, very efficient. So the one downside to the hookshot is that it doesn't do damage to certain enemies. Instead, what you're going to wind up having is you can grab stuff. That's cool, but you're not going to be able to actually do anything more than a stun. But having the hookshot lets you pull those shutters forward and create yourselves a walkway. And also be able to pull off this room with relative ease. Without it, it's kind of tough and I can imagine a bit of a headache, so you don't want that. But stunning the Helmosaurs makes them a lot easier to fight. That's one of the things that this takes a while. This level can fit, or this level, this dungeon can feel like a bit of a drain just because of how much you have to do. But once you kind of get the ball rolling and you get the hook shot, then in general it becomes substantially easier. It would be pretty cool if they would let the stuff that you do during the dungeon. Oh, I should have put that on my bottle. Whoops, can I come back and get you? No. So this is, this is a one-way street, apparently. Leave it to me to figure that one out the hard way. Let's open this key block and keep going. All right, so another mini boss. This is why you're gonna also wanna have the bow. We've got 30 shots here. These are the Goma. When they open their creepy spider eyeballs. Are these spiders or are they crabs? I don't, I don't know. But when they open their creepy eyeballs, you're gonna want to shoot them with your bow. Try to get them out of sync. If they're in sync, it's very, it's very tough to get them to the back streets. Nope, that was a miss. So yeah, this is pretty much where having the bow, not a requirement, but imagine trying to do this fight with a sword as these guys just kind of meander back and forth. It's not, it's not ideal, not fun. They also take a lot of damage too. So, oh no, I aimed the wrong way. Come on boys. There we go. Now I don't know if it's just the bow that you get this combination from or if you can equip bows with bombs and in doing so will give you an explosive ranged weapon. I'm actually doing pretty okay, all things considered. Nor am I like I'm gonna run out of arrows before this fight happens. This is concluded, not happens. This just takes forever. Okay, that's one down. That took like five shots. It's ridiculous. No, 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 no. We got crabs and we don't want crabs. Oh, come on. Two cycles of that, really game, is that necessary? Answer, no. I'm gonna do one more on this guy, I think. After he does his stupid little song and dance. This is not a, oh, two of them. This is not a mini boss I particularly enjoy. It's kind of frustrating and it takes forever. That's the one downside about some of these dungeons is like, this is, I mean, the idea of fighting a Goma in a dungeon is fine, but this just kind of feels, at least in this one, feels like padding. 
So I think it's like five or six shots a piece. I don't know if that's considered like the real mini boss, because this is the one that gives you the the warp or not, but that's that. Make sure to not equip your fairy in a bottle if you want to keep it around. Yikes. Yeah, that's just, it's just heavy. It's kind of annoying. You're just wanting to get through with the level and you got to deal with a bunch of stuff. Okay. That's what we meant to do, huh? This room of Goombas is nice. It gives you a chance to refill your hearts. Very nice. This part of the game would be substantially easier if we had a key. That's what we need. Definitely need a key. Also, if I would have picked up one of those tunics, but I don't want to cheese the game. This is one of those games that's already pretty easy, if I'm being honest. Like, I say that, and I'm horrible at it. Like, don't, don't think that I'm saying it as, like, a way to be cocky or anything like that. Because that would be kind of embarrassing if I did. No, the reality is just that it's not a super tough game. You can accomplish quite a bit without much Zelda knowledge or... Tons of experience with, like platforming and whatnot. That's not too bad. There are some frustrating moments, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've already shown you what they are, just because of me being a fool, but in general, it's not too bad. And I'm sure it's easier to be more accomplished at this game than me. If we could thank you. There's a dive spot here. I don't know if this is a fact, but I'm pretty sure that this is actually one of the few places in one of the dungeons where there's like an like an intermediate dive spot. Maybe there's some in the in the fourth dungeon. That would make sense because it's all about water, but you have to have the hook shot to accomplish this area. You can come in here and get the nightmare key. So, I mean, technically, you could go and finish the, the dungeon here if you wanted to. There's a little bit left to explore. There are rooms in this dungeon that are optional, as there are in most of the dungeons. I'll pull up the map here in just a second. As I bumble through here. So you can see that there are some rooms that are optional. You don't necessarily have to go through and do these rooms. But, you know... We're almost done. We'll come back and, and get them. I think that's kind of a cool part of these Zelda games is like, it's not required that you explore everything. There's no, there's a level of completion that I know that some people probably want to do. And I understand that in that case, it would make sense just from a standpoint of wanting to feel like you really got your money's worth. So that totally makes sense to me, at least. You can come up here and get yourself two more rupees. There's one more chest, it appears, to our right, and that should actually wipe it out. All hook-shotted areas. So that key actually is required, but the other two rupee chests are not. So you don't have to get those if you don't want to get those. You live your life. You you make your Zelda what you want it to be. So we're actually almost done here. We're getting pretty close to the final part of the dungeon. We're going to go ahead and use the Mumbo Mumbo one more time. It's actually super useful if you're stuck in certain areas. I know that you can save and quit, but it just feels super helpful that you're able to Take warps. You can warp to your warp. How about that? One warp, two warp, up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh. So last time we got locked out of this area because I am a fool and I forgot to get that final key, but we have it. Trying to 
make relatively good time. This episode's running a bit long, so... I'm trying to consolidate our experience here. Thank you. We're gonna fight the boss and then skidoo. That just about does it. Not bad. Finishing up this dungeon in about a half an hour. So here's the fifth dungeon boss. It's a little bit on the tricky side. He's quite hungry. This boss used to really annoy me as a child. It's a fun boss, but the slimy old slimy is a little tricky. So he's going to be swinging his tail around. That's the wrong button. He's going to appear out of these four quadrants in the room. You can dodge his tail by hanging out in the corner. You're going to have to try to pull him out from the wall. The one tricky side is that you want to be far enough away that you can really get a few good whacks in there, because if you don't, then you're just going to be spending a lot of time trying to chase him. I love that sound effect that he makes, though, when you when he's uh, chomping. That's funny. So you can get five or six good whacks if you pull him out on, uh, on one side. So you whack off the boss and take him out. Not too bad. Not super difficult, just a little frustrating if you do it wrong. So we will collect our heart container. That makes 11. Good math, everybody. And we're gonna get our percussion on, baby. Everybody loves a nice marimba. Let's listen in. Okay, so guys, we did it. That was a bit of a slog, but thanks for hanging in there with me. I've been D-Mike. We finished Dungeon 5. Next time, we're going to do all kinds of overworld stuff. But thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.